In scientific computing, we are interested in approximating solutions to models that describe the world around us. This could be on a planetary scale, for example, trying to model climate change um, as a function of time, or it could be on a microscopic scale, for example, trying to model how an integrated circuit behaves. Uh, more recently, maybe we even have models that describe how the COVID-19 virus can spread in colleges and universities across the U.S. Here we have a set of differential equations on the right, along with some parameters. Now, solving this model, given some parameters, gives us some estimate of the percentage of students that might contract the virus after a fixed period of time, say four months. Ideally, we can report this number to our campus administrators so that they can make informed decisions about how to protect students, faculty, and staff. Now, our campus administrators are not going to accept our model and its solutions unless there is some way to quantify how accurate the model and solution is and potential deviations and uncertainty from the true unknown quantity. That seems fair. So the question boils down to, how can we quantify how good our estimates are? So let's continue with this COVID-19 example. S suppose we know the true solution, all right? So the true solution is often unknown, but let's suppose that we know what it is and let's denote that true solution to be Y. Okay, now, if we can solve the model equation exactly, and that is a big if that we're going to address next, and the, the, uh, the solution to the model equations if solved exactly is denoted y hat. So if we can solve this exactly. Then we can have an estimate for how good our model is by computing the difference between y and y hat. All right, so this is often what we call the model error. How much does y hat deviate from the true unknown solution y? Uh, this is often a very difficult quantity to estimate because we don't know what y is. It is the role of a modeler to understand how good their equations or their models actually describes the world around them. In scientific computing, there is an additional problem. It is often not possible to compute y hat exactly. So we have to approximate it. So let me give you a more specific example now. And this is something that we're going to refer to as approximation error. Now, suppose we have a differential equation. And if you've taken differential equations before, this will seem familiar. If you haven't, uh, this quantity dy dt talks about how the solution y varies in time. A differential equation is just an equation that relates the solution y to its derivatives. So often we write a, a simple differential equation in this form, dy dt equals f of ty. So some function that depends on t and some function that depends on y. And here, let me just make up some crazy differential equation that I don't know how to solve. So maybe something like 1 plus, you know, the arctan of t times e to the minus y squared times y. Now, of course, we could try and find an exact solution, um, say, plugging this differential equation into a symbolic software package like Mathematica or Maple. Um, but here in this course, what we care about is approximating solutions, okay? Um, so the fundamental theorem of calculus, if you remember it, says that we can write our solution to this differential equation in the form of an integral. So y of t is the integral from 0 to t of f of tau, y of tau, d tau. Okay, well, I just transformed it to an even more messy problem now. Now I need to evaluate an integral. And of course, I don't know how to evaluate an integral. Uh, here in this course, if we don't know how to evaluate something analytically, the best we can hope to do is to approximate this integral discreetly. 
say chopping the integral from zero to little t into little chunks uh, and pieces and approximating the area under the curve. So let's have a look what that really means. So here's my function f of ty. I'm trying to evaluate it from zero to capital T. Then what we do is we approximate this integral by chopping it into various pieces. So maybe if I use the left-hand rule, I might approximate the area under this curve, you know, using rectangles. So suppose that this we approximate using n rectangles, right? Then in scientific computing, what we want to do is understand how good our approximation is, how, appro how good our approximation to the model is. Um, so let's denote, let's let um, y10 to denote the solution after time capital T. And suppose this uses n equals 10 rectangles. Okay, and suppose we can do the same thing. We can compute a y20 and that's the solution using n equals 20 rectangles. And you know, we can keep going, create n equals 40. So in scientific computing, we have confidence in our solution if this sequence, as I refine my number of intervals, so if my sequence y10, y20, y40, y80, so on, if this sequence converges, so we have confidence if the sequence y, yi converges to some number y tilde. As I refine the number of intervals, then the hope is that my, my solution converges to some y tilde, and um, hopefully, if we did things correctly, y tilde should be equal to y hat. So here in this course, we're going to study um, sequences y tilde to understand how quickly they converge to y hat and this provides us with a way to estimate um, our error yi minus y hat.